want to make it painless to create interactive UIs, design simple views for each state in your application, and efficiently update and render just the right components when your data changes. Yes, you can do all this with React. Learn once, write anywhere. Hello everyone, I'm Anika from Edureka. Welcome you all to the session on what is React.js. So before starting the video, let me just take you through the agenda of today's session. We will begin with brushing up with the JavaScript and various JavaScript frameworks available. Then we will understand what is React.js. Moving on, we will see the advantages of React.js and then we will look at what features React.js offers. Moving ahead, we will get to know the key terms of React.js and then before wrapping up the session, we will see some of the applications built on React.js. Meanwhile, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. And also, if you are interested in React.js with Redux certification training, check out the link given in the description box. Now let's begin without much ado. As we are going to know what is React.js, we should be clear with what is JS, that is JavaScript. JavaScript is a dynamic programming language which is widely used for developing web applications. It manipulates both the CSS styles as well as HTML attributes. JavaScript supports both object-oriented programming and procedural programming. It is used for creating web pages with a client-side script to interact with the user and make the web pages dynamic and robust. JavaScript has many frameworks among which we can choose depending on our need. Now as we are talking about the JavaScript frameworks, JavaScript frameworks are nothing but the collection of JavaScript code libraries that provide pre-written JavaScript code to use for routine programming features and tasks. So here are some of the JavaScript frameworks or we can say the libraries available as you can see on the screen like Angular, Node, Meteor, React, Vue, Ember, Polymer, Backbone, Knockout, Aurelia and Exe. Now we should know the advantages of using a framework. So as you can see on the screen, cost reduction, efficiency and security are the major advantages of JavaScript frameworks. So talking about cost reduction, as most of the frameworks are open source and free, which helps the developers to build custom solutions faster and it lowers the ultimate price for the web application. Now talking about efficiency, with well-structured pre-built patterns and functions, the projects can be developed faster without much effort. And now talking about the security part, top JavaScript frameworks are generally supported by large communities where members and users act as testers. Thus, they provide firm security. Now, the question might come to your mind is, why React as we are going to talk about React? So, to answer this, why we are choosing React over other frameworks and libraries? Because in other frameworks, as you can see in the diagram also, the data received from various sources like initial data, real-time data and user input data, which is passed to the dispatcher. The dispatcher then forwards this data to the store from where it ultimately comes to the view. Now, the view is the part where you or a user interact with the application. So, whatever you see on the browser as a web page is the view itself. But what do you think happens at the back end of the frameworks using this traditional data flow? Each time new data is added or any data is updated at the back end, the browser reloads the web page and repeats the whole process again. Only after this we can see the updated data on the view. But this traditional data flow has one major drawback that it uses the DOM, document object model. DOM is an object that is created by the browser each time a web page is loaded, which can dynamically add or remove the data at the back end. But each time any modification is done, a new DOM is created for the same page. This repeated creation of DOM results in unnecessary memory wastage and a decrease in application's performance. Moreover, manipulating DOM is very expensive. Therefore, there was a search for new technology which could save us from this trouble. This is where React.js comes to our rescue. With React.js, 
we can divide our entire application into various independent components. React.js applications still use the same traditional data flow, but something changed at the backend. Now, what is going on at the backend? Now, each time any data is added or updated from the backend, React.js uses a new tactic to deal with it. Instead of reloading the entire page, what React does is it just destroys the old view. Afterwards, it renders the view components with updates on new data and then places the new view in place of the old one. As a solution to memory wastage due to DOM, React introduced Virtual DOM. You might be curious about what is this Virtual DOM and how it solves our problem. This Virtual DOM works in three simple steps. Starting with the first step, whenever any underlying data changes, the entire UI is re-rendered in Virtual DOM representation. Then the difference between the previous DOM representation and the new one is calculated. And in third step, once the calculations are done, the real DOM will be updated with only the things that have actually changed. You can think of it as a patch, as patches are applied only to the affected area. Similarly, the virtual DOM acts as patches and are applied to the elements which are updated or changed in the real. Now let's understand what is React.js. React.js is an open source JavaScript library developed by Facebook, which is used to develop interactive web and mobile user interfaces. React.js is concerned with the components that utilizes the expressiveness of JavaScript with the HTML-like template syntax. React is a component-based library which is used to develop interactive UIs or the user interfaces and it is currently one of the most popular JavaScript front-end libraries which has a strong foundation and a large community supporting it. And React.js is only a front-end library and not the whole framework which deals with the view component of MVC, that is Model View Controller, which you would have understood while learning JavaScript. Now, let's talk about the major aspects of React, which are Virtual DOM, One-Way Binding, and Server-Side Rendering. We have already discussed about Virtual DOM, but let me tell you, like an actual DOM, Virtual DOM is also a node tree that lists the elements and their attributes and content as objects and their properties. React's render function creates a node tree out of the React components. Then it updates this tree in response to the mutations in data model caused by various actions done either by the user or by the system. Now let's move ahead with one-way binding. As I told that the changes into the view happen only in a certain process, so basically what happens here is that there is an action which determines what is going to be the flow. Then we have something called as a state, which indicates that what is the current data representation and what is the possible future representation. And then we have dispatch action, which applies the action and the current state and determines the new state. So in the technologies like Redux, it is called as a reducer. What happens here is that the overall change to the state can happen only through this process. So we know that there will not be any unexpected state change, which makes debugging easy. So one way binding helps developers to control the view rendering. Now talking about SSR, that is server side rendering. It allows us to pre-render the initial state of our React components at the server side only. With server-side rendering, the server's response to the browser becomes only the HTML of the page, which is now ready to be rendered, as you can see on the screen as well. Thus, the browser can now start rendering without having to wait for all the JavaScript to be loaded and executed. As a result, the web page loads faster, and here the user will be able to see the web page in spite of React still downloading the JavaScript creating the virtual DOM, linking events, etc. at the backend. Now let's see the advantages of React.js. So applications performance has increased with React.js. It can be used on both client side as well as server side. And with React, readability has improved a lot and it can easily be used with other frameworks as well. 
Now let's see the features of React.js. As you can see in the picture, the features of React.js include learning curve, concept, performance, size and debugging. Let's understand these features in detail. So starting with learning curve, React has a shallow learning curve and it is suitable for beginners. ES6 syntax is easier to manage, especially for smaller to do apps. What is this ES6 that we will learn in the later part of the session? In React, you code in the JavaScript way, giving you the freedom to choose your tool depending upon your need. For instance, taking Angular in place of React, Angular expects you to learn one additional tool, TypeScript, which can be viewed as the Angular way of doing things. In Angular, you need to learn the entire framework even if you are just building a simple UI application. But this is not the case with React. Talking about the concept, it is the simplicity of virtual DOM which we have already seen. Now talking about the performance, when it comes to performance, React sits right at the top. React is known for its superior rendering speed. Thus the name React is an instant reaction to change with minimum delay. Now talking about the size, as we already know, React is not a framework. This features may be added according to the user's needs. This is the principle behind the lightweight applications built on React. Pick only what is needed. And now let's see the debugging part. React uses compile time debugging and detects errors at an early stage. This ensures that errors don't silently turn up at the runtime. Facebook's unidirectional data flow allows clean and smooth debugging, fewer stack traces, lesser clutter, and an organized flux architecture for bigger applications. Now let me introduce you to some key terms you need to be familiar with. As you can see on the screen as well, let me just explain those. Starting with JSX, that is JavaScript extension. This JSX allows us to include HTML in the same file along with JavaScript. Each component in React generates some HTML, which is rendered by the DOM, actually the virtual DOM. Now talking about ES6, the sixth version of JavaScript is standardized by ECMA International in 2015. Hence the language is referred to as ECMA script. And this ES6 is not completely supported by all modern browsers. So we have solution for this also. ES5. This is the fifth JavaScript version and is widely accepted by all modern browsers. It is based on the 2009 ECMA specification standard and tools are used to convert ES6 to ES5 during runtime. Talking about Webpack, it is a module bundler which generates a build file joining all the dependencies required. And now the Babel. This is the tool used to convert ES6 to ES5. This is done because not all the web browsers can render React directly as we have discussed this earlier also with ES6. Now let's have a look at some of the applications which are using React. As you can see on the screen, Netflix, Facebook, Instagram, Asana, Twitter, Airbnb, OkCupid, PayPal, Instacart, Uber, Uber Eats and so on. These organizations have adopted React because they found a lot of value in helping the developers to build the overall UI as a set of components. So whenever a developer start any application, they can start thinking of small, small components and then this component based approach helps in reusability. As at the starting I had mentioned, learn once and write anywhere. So with this, we have come to the end of this session. Hope it was useful for you and you have enjoyed it. Do not forget to like the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!